In Dice of the Caribbean, players will plunder, bury treasure, grow their fleet size, fight, and attempt to become the most feared pirate in the Caribbean. To set up, each player will receive a pirate board, 4d6 of the same color to represent their ships, two yellow track markers, and one galleon fate token. You will start with zero reputation and zero crew members. You also get one active raider ship with three strength placed above your board. The middle of the table is considered to be the ocean. Here you'll place random galleon tokens equal to five times the number of players face down. Each player will take one, look at it secretly, and place it in his galleon face down. Finally, set aside the six action dice, choose a first player, and you're ready to start your journey. On your turn, you'll roll six action dice. If you roll skulls, place them here. You then use any of your dice roll to lock in actions or use them to move your ships. The other dice are re-rolled. You have up to five re-rolls per turn, but be careful. If you roll a total of three skulls during this phase, you'll lose plunder and your turn ends without any actions. A summary of the actions are as follows and are also written on these summary cards. The captain's hat allows to plunder and pillage. The cannons allow for combat with other captains. The storm can be used to inflict damage on enemy raider ships and crew. The shovel is used to bury your plunder or dig out a buried treasure on another island. The sword allows you to recruit or cause a mutiny on another player's ship. And finally, the skulls are simply bad and you want to avoid rolling these. Let's take a quick look at your raider ships. You can have a maximum of four ships with crew on them. These will be moved around from player's island to the ocean to perform different actions like plunder, pillage, combat, etc. You also have population on your islands which can be used to increase crews on your ship as you might lose some in storms. In combat you will each choose a random galleon from the other player and reveal it. Add that number to the crew size and the highest wins. If it's a fate token, roll to add that to your crew number. The winner will go up one level on the reputation track. But both captains will lose half their crew round up. There is also a way of ransacking another player's island using the combat action. When the last galleon is taken from the ocean, the game end triggers. You will score 2 points for each galleon you have, each treasure at your island is worth the number shown, and you'll score 1 point for every 3 crew members you have, 4 points for each active raiders you have, and if you have the black mark, you will lose 1 point. Add that total to your reputation, and the player with the most becomes the legendary pirate of the Caribbean. This game is a lot of fun, you can push your luck, bluff, steal, and it really puts you in the captain's boots. Yes, there is luck, but it's well mitigated with rerolls, fate tokens, black marks, and bonus rolls at the end of your turn. If there is any action you want to perform, chances are you will. Just how strong will that action be? The components of this prototype are really nice and we can't wait to see the final product. Small box, big fun. If you are looking for a pirate game with tactics, strategy and action dice, check out Dice of the Caribbeans on Kickstarter and as always, if you like it, back it!